The Lord be with you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ of the Lakeshore Fellowship family. I'm uh, speaking to you on a Monday, Monday, uh, February 17th, and uh, thinking about yesterday's message. You know, we've been talking for the last number of weeks about what it means to follow Jesus, to be followers of Jesus. And, and yesterday I said, you know, we're faced with two alternatives. It's either going to be religion or it's going to be relationship. Now, when, when I say religion, I'm defining that word religion in a very narrow sense because you know, you can use religion in a broad sense, like a sociologist does. That, well, yeah, Christianity is a religion, and and we're part, and we have religious practices and beliefs, and and, and worship, you know, is is religious. No, I'm talking about religion in a narrow sense of doing certain things, believing certain doctrines, having a um, acting in a particular way in order to get God's favor, in order to be pleasing to God, or you know, to live in such a way um, that God's going to bless us. That is religion, you know, where we feel like, oh, if I just pray enough, or you know, I, I go to church once in a while, or, or maybe I, I serve, you know, then may, maybe God will be pleased with me. You know, then, then you know, maybe God will smile on me a little bit more. That's religion. Relationship is knowing that Jesus has restored us to a relationship, a faith relationship and love with God as our Heavenly Father. And it's because of that relationship of love that we're moved in response to what he has done to want to follow Jesus, that we long to follow Jesus, to worship the Father, to pray. If it's religion, it's a, you know, I really ought to, I really should do this, or I must do these things. Well, yeah, I really need, I really need to be in worship. Yeah, I know I need to be praying some more. That's religion talking. If it's a relationship, it's like, oh, I want to worship the Lord. I long to know the Lord better. And, and, and to spend time with him in prayer. Huge difference. When we're talking about daily being a follower of Jesus, it's either going to be in the way of religion or it's going to be in the way of relationship. And, and everything in, in the church and the Christian life can be funneled through those two things, as I talked about Sunday. Are we doing it from a religious mindset? Our worship, our prayers, our service, our, our, our daily... Um, time with the Lord, or is it out of relationship, a response to his love for us? And so when Jesus and the disciples um, get confronted by the Jewish religious leaders, this is in Mark 7 on Sunday, because Jesus and his disciples are eating, and they haven't richly washed their hands so that according to the regulations of the Jewish religious leaders called the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They're supposed to wash their hands so they're richly clean before they eat so that the food is, doesn't become unclean and make them unclean. And then, you know, and then you can't be a part of uh, the worship of God. You have to go through all kinds of ceremonies to become richly clean. And it's like you're excluded and here's Jesus and the disciples, and, and they've eaten with unclean hands. And, you know, obviously they were being spied on by the Pharisees. Like, oh, we caught you. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be doing that. Why don't you follow the traditions of the elders? Oh, my goodness. For them, it was all about not only following the commands in God's word, but then they're added rules, regulations, and they're 
traditions, their practices, that they added on top of God's word. In fact, you know, as we heard a little bit on, on Sunday, especially in this text, their rules would tend to even trump what God's word says. I, I just imagine it. They were so focused on the right religious practices, doing the right things that they thought would be pleasing to God, that it was all about what they were doing. That's a religious mindset. And, you know, we can easily get trapped in that. We default by nature to a religious mindset. Now, there's always going to be doctrines. There's always going to be, you know, morality and moral behavior. And there's always going to be uh, traditional practices of worship and prayer. And those aren't the problem necessarily, not in and of themselves. The problem is when those traditions, those beliefs, those practices become the end, they become the focus, they become the goal. We focus on those, rather than those being the means to have a relationship with God the Father through Jesus. It becomes all about you know, how we worship or you know, serving in the right way, praying hard enough. Do I have the right belief system? Because, oh, if I'm not, you know, then maybe God's going to be angry with me. That's a religious mindset. And, you know, we can easily fall into that. And I, I run into that when I meet with people, talk with fellow believers, and I'm like, oh, you know, I just haven't been praying like I should. Maybe God's not happy with me. I'm like, oh, my goodness. But, you know, I can fall into that. And, and there, Jesus is confronting us and saying, you know what? You're putting your trust in either your right beliefs, your right behavior, or your right practices. And so when he confronts the Pharisees, this is in Mark chapter 7, He's quoting uh, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29. And he calls them hypocrites, stage actors. You know, when we're just going through the motions, they were just going through the motions. Jesus says, quoting Isaiah, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Their hearts are far from me. In other words, their hearts are are not in it. They're focused on what they're doing, how they're behaving, what they're believing, and, and whether you know they're being good enough for God. And, and that's where Jesus reminds us. It's not first and foremost about the externals. It's not about... Do we have all the right doctrinal beliefs, as important those, as those are, or our moral behavior? It's not first and foremost about our worship practices and traditions, as important as any of these things are. It's about our heart. Are our hearts with him or far from him? Is our heart in it, in following Jesus, or not? Yeah, and this is where Jesus reminds us of the condition of our hearts. It's not about the externals, but it's about our heart and where our hearts are at. And realizing, first of all, how much our hearts desperately need the redeeming, saving love of God the Father that he has poured out in Jesus. You know, the religious leaders are making it all about eating food with unclean hands, thinking that by eating that food, now with dirty hands, it would make themselves unclean. And Jesus says, you know what? It's not about the food you eat. It's not about what goes into you. It's not about the externals. He says it's about what comes out of your heart. It's about the desires of your heart and how your heart and your heart's desires affect your thinking, affect the words that come out of your mouth, and affect 
your deeds and your actions. It's about what comes out of our hearts, which apart from Christ, man, our hearts can are pretty darkened, broken, can be cesspools of all kinds of nasty stuff. Now, God created us in his image, but, you know, we've twisted and distorted that. And, and so Jesus makes that very clear when, when he says, What comes out of a person is what defiles them, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. And then he names a whole bunch of them. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed. That's a big one in our culture. Malice, deceit. Oh my goodness, we live in a culture of lies, lewdness, envy, slander. Oh yeah, there's another big one. Tearing people down, ruining their reputation, arrogance and folly. Yeah, all kinds of stupidity. He says, that's what comes out of our hearts. We have diseased, darkened, sin-sick hearts. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. That's what ruins our lives. And so Jesus is reminding us, you know, it begins with realizing the condition of our hearts and how much we need Jesus to heal and rescue our hearts and restore them into a relationship with our Creator God as our loving Heavenly Father. So it, it begins with realizing the condition of our hearts, how much we need Jesus, and how He came to reveal the heart of God for us. That He has in His obedient life, in His ministry of serving of laying his life down, of casting out demons, of healing the sick, and of going all the way to the cross. If this is God in our human flesh, that Jesus is revealing the very heart of God for us to rescue us, to heal us. This is his self-giving, sacrificial, enemy-embracing, forgiving love that he revealed, poured out, and gave on the cross for you and for me. And Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And when he rose from the dead, that that was the resurrection of our humanity. That was the creation of a new heart and a new life for us. And it is in hearing that good news that our hearts are healed. And, and Jesus invites and calls us in faith, to put our trust in him every single day to surrender our lives in faith to him as the Lord and to see and know in Jesus the reality of who we really are, that in Jesus, united to him, we have new hearts, that we are a new creation, and that as we surrender in faith, trusting in Jesus, we begin to share in and participate in that new heart, that new creation life that is in Jesus. And it's about that relationship, that union with Jesus, each and every single day. Yes, we still have in and of ourselves that our old fleshly hearts, but united to Jesus, we surrender to the new heart that we have in him that begins to work its way in us, prompting new desires and new thoughts so that we want to follow Jesus. We want to worship the Heavenly Father. We want to live in a daily intimacy with him, calling on him in prayer. We want to follow Jesus, giving our lives away in loving service wherever he puts us because of the new hearts we have in him. But you know what? Let's be honest. Sometimes we just don't feel like it. 
there's days when it's just like, be honest, some days our hearts are not in it. Some days you're like, oh, I don't feel like spending time in prayer. There's some Sundays, I'm sure, be honest, I don't feel like going to church and going to worship. Hey, I'll be honest. Saturday, I told Tracy, yeah, the irony, you know, the text about their hearts are far from me, their hearts are not in it. I told Tracy, oh, man, boy, I, I don't feel like my heart's in it. Do I have to preach tomorrow? I, I'm just really not feeling it. But yeah, that's where I have to, okay, Lord, I really need your strength and your guidance because I need you to help guide me to get to that point. And, you know, and that's the way relationships work. You know, all relationships and, and marriages. I mean, there's times if Tracy tells me, hey, could, Chris, could you, uh, could you do the dishes, gather the trash? You know, it's be trash day tomorrow. Ugh. Oh, I really don't feel like it. My heart is not in it. And I'll tell you, times like that, I have to remind myself, because I love Tracy, because I know she loves me, and I want to serve her, I'm going to get my lazy buns off the sofa, and I'm going to do the dishes. Even if I don't feel like it. And that's the way relationships work. That's the way marriage works. Now, true, marriage can degenerate to the point where you're just going through the motion and you forget the reason why you're doing what you're doing. It's because of a relationship of love. You have a commitment to each other. And so the same thing is with our daily following of Jesus. You know what? Sometimes our heart is not in it. And we have to guard against the temptation of just going through the motions or worship becoming routine, prayer becoming, oh, it's something I have to do, otherwise God's not going to be pleased with me. There's when we got to remind ourselves how much our hearts need the saving grace and love of the Father in Jesus. And we need to glimpse anew the heart of the Father for us how much he loves us, how much he has embraced us with his love, and that no matter what we do or don't do, he will never stop loving us. Let that touch our hearts every single day. And then act out of that. Even if we don't feel it. Even if there's times like, oh, just really not feeling like going to worship. Pinch yourself, remind yourself of how much you need his grace. Recall how much he loves you. And that, yeah, I do want to worship him. I do want to take time out today to be in prayer. Even if I'm not really feeling it. Because in Jesus, we know we have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And he's given you a new heart. So I want to encourage you. Follow Jesus every day with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body. Even if you don't always feel it. Because he's given his heart to you. Let that be your challenge for this week. God's peace be with you. Take care.